Hey guys, EBP Man here. Now in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at 3D scanning technology. Uh, we've looked at a lot of creator technology on the channel. As a hobbyist, uh, we like uh, creating a lot of things at home. And one of the things that we've been reviewing for quite some time now are 3D scanners. Uh, it's something that could scan an object like this, and then maybe turn it into something like this. We're talking about a 3D scanner from a company called 3D Maker Pro. And this product not only allows you to take this and scan it and turn something into something like this, but it also allows you to do this. It is super easy. This scan took no more than three minutes to scan, uh, even though it took several hours to print. Let's go ahead and check it out. Now, before taking a closer look at what's included in the box and how I was able to scan uh, this to make this, and I'm telling you, it just only took a number of minutes to do. Let's talk about the specs. So now there's a lot of specs that you can look at it here, uh, but we're gonna just focus just on a handful of them. First of all, accuracy. You're looking at 0.1 millimeter accuracy, which is gonna be fantastic and give you again a lot of great captures. And then also a resolution of 0.15 millimeters. Now, it does have a wide core and a micro core. You're gonna see it when you look at the device, uh, and this is why uh, these uh, data points are here for you to consider. Now, the cool thing about this scanner is that it doesn't require any markers or dots, and it can scan dark objects, light objects, daylight, or dim lit areas because of how the technology works. The scan speed is 10 frames per second, and the light source is NIR or LED. Now, it can do also texture scans. It's gonna do two types of uh, scans, texture and also uh, there's a geometric type scan or geometry scan. Um, output is going to be STL, OBJ, ASC, or PLY. And the unit is bigger, so it weighs 3.3 pounds. But the cool thing is that it works on Windows 10, Mac OS 12, and it does support the new M1 chipset. Now this product comes in a very heavy duty travel case, and I really like not only that it was shipped to me this way, but also the fact that if you take this um, from, let's say, one location to another to do some scans and you're taking your laptop with you, you're gonna be able to keep this really well protected. So as we take a look at what's in this case, you'll notice that we have a power adapter, you have a turntable, and I'll move this over. So this turntable also then has a motorized turntable, turntable base underneath it. And then what you have right here what you have right here is the actual scanner. So the scanner comes in uh, tucked into this case. There is, again, all these tripods and things that allow you to use a scanner. But you notice just the power cord, and then this is where you're going to find your cables. So let me take this out because it's, it's a tight fit. Now in the box, you have a lot of cool accessories. Uh, the first thing I'll highlight is that you have this tripod, which is going to allow you to, or monopod in this case, um, angle it down so that you can scan things that are rotating on the actual pad that we saw, motorized pad. This is your cable that motorizes the pad. It's a micro USB to USB-A. And then this is the cable itself that connects to the scanner. Uh, pretty nice because I've seen a lot of connectors like this in the past and it's a pain to pull out. So it has this, this cable right here that assists you with pulling it out, which I think is an ingenious idea. USB-A on this side and this is, can you can use a, um, a USB-C converter is going to work fine. I've, that's what I actually use it with. And then you have your power cord there. Now the scanner is large and it's 3.3 pounds, but I'm telling you, I prefer to use it in hand mode than it is on the tripod mode when it comes to scanning objects. It's just a lot faster doing it this way. You have some buttons on the top here. So this is going to adjust the brightness up and down. And then this is your scan on, uh, to start the scanning process um, and stop the scanning process. And then this is, this is where all the lenses are. And you can see that there's a lot of stuff going on here. And I think that this accounts for the accuracy and how easy it is to scan. Uh, this product, has the best documentation that I've seen from a new product before. Uh, it is also easy to understand. It's written well. Uh, I didn't find any spelling errors either. And I also found that the software itself functions really well too. So uh, this is the area that you'll point like this when you need to be scanning and well, uh, in your hand like this, and then you have the controls to increase or decrease the brightness uh, depending on what you're scanning. It does have a threaded bottom that you can thread into uh, so that if you want to put it on a tripod. But again, very flexible, um, a little bit on the heavy side at 3.3 pounds, but it scans really well. Uh, right here you have the port uh, that you plug into. This is what your power is going to be and your data cable all at once. But again, you have that little pull cable that makes it easy to take it out. So uh, let's go ahead and see the scanner in action and why I'm so excited about it, because I'm telling you, this works so well out of the box. It's, it's definitely a good product. Now, let me show you some of the sample scans that I did. I actually took this bust and 
This bus that you see right here is very, very difficult to scan because of the color. Um, I've actually tried other scanners with this bus and I just couldn't get anywhere with it unless I did some type of um, detergent, uh, some dry shampoo, something that would spray it white so that you can capture it. But this captured very fast without any issues. Now there are things that I could do to make this scan a little bit better. So first of all, you're gonna see that there's some defects on this because this was printed on the FL Sun V400 at mm, 600 millimeters per second. And there's things I could have done to, to tweak this a little bit. But I really like what I got here. Uh, a couple things that I noticed that I can actually improve, uh, and remember this is a pre-release, this is like a very early release version of the scanner, is that I noticed that I did lose some detail here in the ear. Right, And it could have been that the quality of my scan wasn't just really good and as it was repairing and then fixing things, you saw that because other areas, like if you look at this area here, this has so much detail. The detail is just spot on. And then when I'm looking at some of the areas here, I notice that there's some areas that some of the detail is just not 100% there, but it could have been again because there were some holes in the actual uh, image itself that I captured and it did the repair itself. Uh, other areas, you know, are just fantastic. So if I flip this on the back and you look at the back, look at that. Those are, the dimensions here are spot on. Even from a scale perspective, this is 100% scale. The only thing I did differently, and you'll notice here, and I'll bring this up right here, is the base. I actually cut off the base uh, because I had the platter on there, and, and th this is me, right? So it has some material and it's not quite straight, but that's how I cut it off in the STL itself. But it, it had more material here. Uh, and as I did my measurements uh, on each one of these, and if you were to focus on this part up, it is like, it's spot on. It's like really, really, really accurate. Now, as I've mentioned, we reviewed a lot of scanners on the channel, and it's very rare when I find a scanner that has great documentation and actual software that is easy to use. And that's definitely the case with this scanner. Also, one of the things that's very challenging when you're doing scanning is scanning dark objects. So uh, here I have this model, and I'm gonna bring it on frame so that you guys can see it. Uh, so I have this model right here. It hasn't been, hasn't been sprayed any, in any way, right? Uh, has some very detailed features all the way around it. And it's a pretty nice scale, right? I'm gonna put it back here on the turntable. And I just wanna show you uh, how good the scanner is. And I'm gonna show you how I was able to achieve the scan. So here's one of the outputs of the scanner. We just printed this on our 3D printer. It has some 3D printing defects. But when you look at this, you may ask yourself, wow, is it to scale? How accurate is the scanner? The scanner is incredibly accurate because I'm gonna bring another one into frame. And then this is actually to scale. This is 100% to scale. And we're gonna bring them side by side so you can see them. So you can see them side by side. 100% to scale. Incredibly, incredibly accurate. Now, obviously the filament that I use, is, I think actually looks better than the original. Uh, at least that's what Nolda's telling me. Uh, but the cool thing about this is that it worked really, really simple. So I'm going to show you how quickly it is to capture an image uh, or an item that you want to scan, even if it's a dark image like this, and how this software works. Now, the very first thing that we're going to do with the software is we're going to choose Start Scanning. And a couple things where we have some choices here. Um, you notice how very quickly the image or, you know, the, the actual um, item itself that's on this turntable is already showing up because the scanner is right here on the side. A couple things though, this scanner does well in lit areas, and you can see the kind of lighting that I have. Um, unlike other scanners that have difficulty with that, and also with dark objects. You have a couple options here. You have a table scan, uh, so that's gonna be if you want to use uh, the actual, uh, I would say this, this table, uh, table rotating tray that you have here. Um, and then what you also have is easy scan. Easy scan for me is handheld mode. That's what I prefer to use. I find that I get more control this way. When I use the actual table scan, it's gonna capture so many images and then it's gonna stop. And then it's gonna capture so many images and then it's gonna stop. And it's going to basically bring everything together. What I like about the easy scan is that the easy scan allows you to capture everything as you'd like to do it without having to stop and start and stop and start. Now over here on the side also what you have is how far are you? Are you near? Are you far? Uh, you have the ability to adjust the brightness of the image and then you also have what are you scanning? Are you scanning the texture or the geometry? Right? Uh, then you have edit mode and you have all these other things. Now when we go to the scanner, uh, you can see how, how much of the image the scanner is getting and this is what I'm talking about. Look how good this is. You see that right there? That's pretty spectacular. I'm going to come up here so you can see the detail in the face. Right? 
Now you do have a couple of buttons here that you can actually work with. These buttons adjust the brightness. So you're gonna watch the brightness scale that's right there. And as soon as I push that up, it goes up. You see how it's blown out? It goes down, goes down, goes down, right? Not a good image. Uh, the other thing that you have is that you have kind of like this legend here on the side. You see how I have that area right there where there's a lot of blue? That's a good scan, right? That's the type of scan that you want. And what we're going to do is we're just going to go through the scan so you can see how easy and how quickly I can capture something on this. And again, the neat thing about this is that I can change the actual, um, you know, the brightness on the actual scanner itself, which is also super duper cool. All right, so let's go ahead and start. So I'm starting to, and you'll notice I didn't even press anything on the screen because it also has a button that's going to support this. So as you can see, all this is being scanned right now. And you'll notice that it's not losing um, any of the frames, right? So typically with scanners, as you're doing the scan, you basically run into problems because it can't capture um, or the alignment of the image. And it kind of like loses the actual scan. And check this out. Isn't this incredible? I love this scanner. Just gonna let it go up right there. I'm gonna get all the part of the hair right there. I'm gonna come back. <laughs> this is so cool. When we first started doing this, we were just like getting so excited because this really opens up a lot of possibilities. Now, the other thing that's so cool about this is that you don't need any markers. I'm used to using these markers to be able to kind of keep track of the actual graphics, right? And you can notice that it right there, it had some difficulty because I'm moving a little faster there and I'm actually not uh, staying within the image. I can pull back a little bit and you can just, just gotta watch uh, right here, that side right there, what it says. And I'm gonna go right here to make sure I have this part of the face. But you can see how effortless this is, right? How I'm picking stuff up so, so easily, right? I'm gonna get the top of the head Make sure we get, I'll pull back. And once I'm done capturing everything to my satisfaction, all I have to do is press this button right here and I'm done. All right, so the processing is complete and you can see here that this, for, for, for the effort that I put in there, you saw how much time it took. There's some spots that I missed. I can clean that up a little bit later. That was pretty good. That was fast, right? We're gonna go ahead and process it. Right, I'm just gonna go ahead and cancel this. I'm gonna let it go ahead and, and process just to see what we get out of this. Cause I just wanna show you, I could actually go back, I can take my time. I can actually get a better, um, a better scan. But here I just wanted to show you what my experience was. Cause it was like super fast, that it was a quick scan. And if you've ever used a hand scanner before, um, I hope you can appreciate that it's typically not that easy. It is not that easy to get that kind of scan um, in this type of lighting again with a dark image the way or or a dark object the way we have that one right there so right now it's going through and it's cleaning things up it's going through fusion uh, the software again is familiar software you've probably seen this with some um, other brand scanners you can see what's going on in the back here it's going through and now it's uh, doing any kind of repairs that it needs to do and you want to do better scans because you don't really want to allow the software to do many repairs unless it's absolutely necessary uh, because, again, the, the actual image quality isn't that great. Um, so it's going through now almost the last portion of this process. But you could already see the image back here, how good that looks. And again, this is what impresses me so much with the software. All right, so I can export if I want, but I'm not going to. Check this out. Isn't that awesome? Look at that. We're going to go ahead and get a little closer. That, my friends, is one fantastic scan. Look at the hair. See that, how that looks? And you saw how much effort there was. Look at the back right there. Let's look at the bottom. Look at that. Look at all that detail. That's crazy. If this doesn't convince you that this is a great product, I'm telling you, as soon as I started playing with it, and the fact that I was able to get that, the software, I will tell you, is, is a little buggy. Um, again, I have a pre-release that I'm playing with, but this is the most complete product that I've had that has been an early release, that it has quality software, great documentation, and it works. So guys, that wraps up our review. 
see you in the next video.